Hey, GP learners. Many of you probably use things like the NHS app and use that in your practice or with your patients. But what if you don't have access to it or what if you're looking for something different that can actually do a little bit more? Well, in this episode, I'm joined by Stephen, who's going to show us the potential alternative to the NHS app and how it may benefit you, your patients, your practice, and even your networks. So I'm going to bring Stephen on to join us and let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. So thanks for joining us, Stephen. Um, I know you're going to show us your product, uh, My Surgery app, that kind of looks pretty amazing in terms of what it can do, and, and I'm keen to see the functionality. But but just before you do that, why don't you give us the history of how this kind of came about, and, and you know, talk us through My Surgery app. Yeah. So um, yep, good, good to meet you. So I was a practice manager for uh, 16 years in in a in a big primary care centre in Swansea, uh, and we did a lot of work with patient participation groups. And the feedback from them was that websites are kind of window dressing for the surgery, but they'd like a lot more of interaction with the surgery. Um, they'd like a lot more and they'd like everything in one place. So so uh, websites, we tend to, to send them off to different links or different places. Uh, or we tend to refer them to sort of patient or code UK or different resources. They wanted everything in one place and easily accessible. Uh, also, they said that... Um, Patients who maybe are not so tech savvy find it difficult to navigate websites. Uh, they don't have access to PCs or laptops, and they find it find it much easier to use apps. And certainly, research we've done with some universities sort of compounds that the apps are far easier for patients to navigate and use and find information. So we've built a, an app for patients, which they download the app, and it, the app is for their own surgery and mm -hmm. primary care network or cluster, and then uh, that links to all the surgery digital services and the additional services they offer. Uh, as a as a surgery or, or or a primary care network. Wow. So should we have a look and see what it can actually do? Because it's probably more useful yep. to, to see it rather than anything else. So I'm going to bring yep. you your screen on screen. There you go. Okay, so this is uh, Grange Road Surgery and Grange Road Primary Care Network, which are obviously fictional fictional um, uh, practicing and PCNs. This is a desktop version, but it does size better. When we look at this, this is how it look, would look for a patient when they are, have downloaded the app uh, from the App Store on their mobile, on their smart device. But the purposes of this, I'll, I'll, I'll show it on the full screen. So the patient can phone the surgery uh, from the app, uh, and then uh, they can scroll down onto the home page. On the bottom here, they, you can see there are four uh, icons. Uh, the dashboard, which is the home page, health resources, your surgery, and the what's on calendar. But the home page, first of all, uh, links patients to, if, if surgeries do use uh, an online triage provider, such as uh, eConsult, Ask My GP, Engage Health, or Clinic, or any other provider, they can uh, link patients mm -hmm. directly off to that. So the patient would just click here now, and that would take patients off then to the, uh, to the um, provider's to their own surgery linked for their tri triage. Uh, again, they can patients can click on uh, check your symptoms. So they can click on that. This currently links to the NHS Wales symptom checker, but we can link to any symptom checker for England, Scotland, and Ireland also. Uh, again, patients can book appointments. Uh, that will take them off to the, the your your personal on your surgery's online booking system, and they can request uh, repeat medication. So they can that again that will take them off to the booking portal. Uh, we. We are linking in quite soon with NHS Digital for NHS login, uh, so that, that again that will take patients off to the to, to your if you're using EMIS Vision or TPP that patients can can request that. Um, for practices in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, we have enabled online registration for uh, your your. Through, through the app, so patients can uh, click here, they can fill out the registration form, submit two forms of ID for photo, passport, uh, and driver's license, for uh, proof of address, and record a short video to validate them for your service, and that comes through to you, but to your practice dashboard. But in England, we are, as I said, um, towards the end process of NHS digital login. Uh, so that will enable patients in England to register here. Uh, then there's a section for latest news. If you do have latest news, new starters, new GP starting or uh, as here, um, coronavirus updates, you can put the news here. And again, you can you can do that from the dashboard. The dashboard is here. It's pretty easy to add uh, new things in, but for the purpose of this prem demonstration, we'll just show you the app for the time being. Then there are other links. So uh, getting help online. So the, the, the research we did with patients that some patients don't want to be let we, we don't want to exclude patients from not being able to use certain technologies in primary care we want to be as exclusive inclusive as possible so we've partnered with uh, the good things foundation again this does size better on a mobile phone this is how it would look and the patients can, can click on the uh, button and then that takes them to a resource which is free through the app uh, and it's a, a resource which helps patients to to to, to 
trained how to get online and simple things like uh, you, how to use a keyboard, how to use a mouse, using a touchscreen to online basics and improving your health in a GP surgery. And they can do it's in English and Welsh and they can they can use this resource uh, and they can sign off and they can do it at a time convenient for them. And really that's to help patients to get on with um, with digital inclusion in, in primary care really, so it doesn't exclude any patients. Um, then we go into health resources. This this section, uh, again, from patient feedback, we were, we were referring patients to, to, to self-help resources or navigating them to, to resources, uh, but they wanted everything put into one place. So we they would, didn't have to go elsewhere to look for things. So stuff like uh, cancer, we have, we have um, partnered with, with with uh, cancer consultants to build um, to build resources for patients, which are in one place, and also we partner with Macmillan Cancer Support. But the, it's not just cancer; it's any topic really, such as stop smoking. Uh, we've got BMI calculators there for patients, so again, they can they can access the information and get their own uh, BMI information and, and be, be put back into the app. Uh, so they can search um, they can search all health resources. But again, it's not just national. We work on on a regional basis uh, where we were we had a, a referral process for. Uh, physiotherapy so we've put that referral process in here so if you do have any any localized uh, care pathways you can you can put those into the health resources here and again you can control that from you from your practice dashboard it's pretty easy to to update mm -hmm. a health resource but again we'll just we'll, we'll come back to that again on the surgery uh, so they can click the third icon here in this information about the surgery uh, the patient can call you or uh, there is a button for for patients to um, email you so if i put a um, if I put an email address in now and save that, and if I go back to the app and update it and click back into the My Surgery app, you can see that the patients can email you. But if you don't, don't mm -hmm. want a patient to email, you can disable that. Uh, they can call you there. They can see your opening times by toggling down and see when you're opening and closed. And again, you control that from your dashboard. Uh, if you do have branch surgeries, you can also include your branch surgeries and patients can see what the branch surgery address is, call now or email them. Uh, there's also a place for practice teams. Patient feedback, wanted they wanted to know what uh, areas of responsibility were for teams. So um, they can click here to see what um, what, what teams and what their daily responsibility is. So you know, you can explain what pharmacists do. You can explain what nurse practitioners do, or what nurses do, or what um, paramedics do now in primary care. So any team members you have, you can you can uh, update them there and then explain what their responsibility is. So it gives more familiarity to patients. Really, again, out of hours, patients were people from patients were they, they were they were a bit uh, they didn't like the fact they had to uh, they had to phone the surgery to. Get redirected to out of hours. They wanted more information in the app, so we put that here. Um, information what to do if it, it, only when to phone nine and nine for what reason, and then they can click the button then uh, here that, that will enable the phone to, to phone the out of hours service for your region, uh, and they can also um, visit the website then for out of hours to get more information. Or if you have uh, MIU units, you can put information in there as well. Um, if you do offer private services, there's a section here to advertise what, what you do offer and again, the price list to avoid any complaints of patients not knowing what, what your charges are beforehand. Um, then there's a GDPR statement. You can put out whatever you want, um, really. Uh, links to home visit protocol, um, and there's a link to your website on, on all your social medias to, to help patients to to um, to get more followers more quickly. Um, and then there's a if we go to the what's on calendar, patients wanted to know exactly what was going on and when in the surgery and in the community. So um, we've got a section for what's on, and again you control this as a practice manager or PCM lead or a social prescriber, a link worker or a third sector organisation. You can all have a limited access to the app to to sort of. Um, put input in into the app and particularly into the what's on calendar so patient, if patients are looking for flu clinic they can narrow it down by the by the um here they can find the flu clinic what date and what time and where and click on it to see instructions or they can book a book book online if you do allow for booking online for flu clinic or coronavirus clinic uh if you do have befriending services whatever whatever they are or online education you can narrow patient narrow it down and, and find out what what's going on in the surgery and again this, this can be done on a, on a practice and the pcn cluster-wide basis um yeah, and then again from the app's homepage, so, so from our dashboard, this is what you can do. Uh, these four here populate the app. Um, if you do run patient surveys, you can run that for, again from the app. We can we can we can build the digital forms for you, and you can send notifications to patients to ask to ask them to uh, fill out the form, and patients get a link, and then they basically click here, and then it takes them to the patient survey. They can fill it fill it out. Um, it's taking a while to populate, but it does populate in the end, and then they can fill out submit, and we populate that that results of that survey for you on a um, 
individual pace patient or or a group uh, report and we can do that we can run the survey for you on a practice or a pcn cluster-wide basis um, then in the app you can see the app users so this is our test page so you can you can register you can see what the app users who the app users are um, registrations in England, in Wales, Scotland and Ireland, registrations for the app will come through to this area here. Again, sending out notifications is pretty easy. If I send a notification out now, um, on the left hand side here, these are notifications used by all practice managers UK wide. On the right hand side, these are notifications used by um, specific that you've built specifically for you. So you don't have to rewrite uh, ones. You can click save, save ones which you, you, you would use regularly. And these are set up pretty easily there. But if I use one now, if I use the COVID vaccine information, We've just updated this uh, when Public Health Public Health uh, issued the, the update. So we, we click on that. We can link it to a page. We can link it to a page here. We we'll link it to the um, COVID vaccine 19 information. We send that out. Once that's sent, it sends to everybody in your practice or PCN who have downloaded the app. And if you see here on the right hand side, there's a there's a bell. They get a notification on their phone if the phone is there is just on the desk. But if they, once they open it up, you can see here that the, that. Um, Grange Road Surgery have now sent a notification of the vaccination update. And if they want to know more, they, then it takes them to a page about the vaccine, eligibility for the vaccine. So you can you can inform patients pretty quickly. There's an audit trail in, in there to see you know when you, when you sent out a vaccine, uh, um, a uh, notification, how many devices read it. Also, there's page views. So uh, PMs and and cluster leads and PCN leads wanted information about what the what what the usage stats were. So there's um, there's views here to see you know what patients are doing within the app, uh, and you can it also always defaults to, to the most used. But you can see what people are clicking on, and you can get um, big data then, and you can get that data on a PCN wide basis or a practice specific basis. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that gives you informed decision making then going forward to see you know what, what our patients wanting to know about. Um, yeah, any questions really? Yeah, so really complete kind of process and, and app and things. And I'm really interested to see how you've developed, you know, this kind of product that can enable quite a lot of functionality. So I really like the fact that you can obviously, you've got the what's on element, so you can share with patients what's going on within the practices, within the network, that kind of stuff, coupled yeah. with the fact that you can push that to patients. And that, that's the, the key thing is having the, the push element, uh, I think. So then you can you know engage them in, in whatever may be happening. So like you said, COVID vaccination clinics is obviously a hot topic right now. Yeah. Flu backs in terms of sorting yeah. those things out, but even campaigns that your practice may be doing to try and help with general health and you know, cough reminders, I guess, potentially. Yeah. Um, might be something that could be looked at um, yeah. or even you know if a practice has an urgent thing they need to let the patients know about so for example god forbid it doesn't happen again but if we had a cyber hack and actually don't yeah. contact the practice um yeah it's using a separate system which i'm assuming you can still access if you've got a phone or something like that to the back end you yeah. can then just let everyone know actually we've got some problems this is what you do in the meantime and you can yeah. push that out and, and that, it's that push element which i know within the nhs app isn't there yet i don't know if that's still on the roadmap in terms of how that's looking but that's mm. definitely something that that to me sounds really interesting really yeah you know um, a benefit to patients and, and to you know um, clinicians as well in terms of the practices being able to run effectively yeah yeah during testing one of our testing practices they used the they, t they tested the, the app with their patient participation group on a monday morning um mm. one of the, their phone lines went down so they pushed notification out um to tell patients our phone lines are down alternative you, you, you know Please bear with us while we, we fix the problem. So, patient and the patient, the participation group fed back that that was really good, useful information. That that you know they know that you know it's it's improving communication with patients instantly. Um, you know we, we close my surgery closes every every other Wednesday for training. Uh, before we used to put a notice on the on the window to say close for training, come back tomorrow at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really informing patients very well. So you know now we, we tell patients we are closed at one o'clock for training. We we're open again at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. During these times, and we link to the out of hours page so patients know exactly what to do if we are closed. Um, mm -hmm. It prevents patients from having you know coming down to collect their script when we close and having to complain. So you know it, it, we found that patients. I think the key thing we did in the research with patients was if you communicate as much as you can with us, we 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 know that you're working better with us and we know what's going on. Mm. Uh, so communication with patients is key. And I think the notifications, not just on a practice basis, but again, on a, on a PCN wide basis, you've got a big message to put out like a coronavirus vaccine update. You can, you can communicate with your whole PCN population very quickly and you can see how many, and, and with, with the, um, with the, with the notifications page, you can see instantly how many people have read that notification. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, so, you know, it is being communicated to patients really. 
and then that leads on to like you said the analytical information in terms of what yeah. you've got. I mean, it's even a soft way of trying to get an idea of demand, um, actual demand rather than subjective, I guess, demand, because you've got yeah. use and of various different parts, you know, people wanting to book appointments, people navigating for information. It may even help you kind of get a headline, a head start in terms of, you know, what services you need to deliver potentially. Yeah, exactly. Uh, particularly the health resources. We, we found that a lot of patients are clicking on particular health resources in our trial practices. So we, we you know, we, that that's instant feedback to pay to practices and know have you do you do you have enough resources there um you know if they are introducing particularly through the primary care network or the cluster pages uh the projects are the the uh the social prescribing and the stuff we do with with the third sector when they they, they push that into information to patients how many patients are reading it um how many patients are interacting with that and how you know so we, we get instant feedback from patients to see how successful that is and it, it just it just informs decision making going forward as to what what practices need to to do around patient demand uh, there is an app update in february which will allow patients to which is called my health hub uh, it allows patients to um, if they're on repeat medication they can save that medication uh, from the bnf directory and then it'll remind them when to take the medication uh, but not only that it'll remind them to to order the medication. So if they ordered on the 1st of December, they'll get a notification through the app to say, okay, you've ordered 1st December, your medication will run out on the 28th. Uh, so seven days before the 28th, uh, it'll send a notification say, right, phone the surgery, phone your pharmacy, book online to, to, to re order your repeat medication. And similarly, if they've got a chronic disease, diabetes, uh, COPD, asthma, whatever it is, um, they can add a reminder for annual uh, annual review. So if they're on, they can add reminders for uh, 12, 9, 6, 3 months, 1 month. Uh, and then they, they'll tell the patient seven days before their annual review is due to phone the surgery, book your appointment again to try and get the resource time saving from the uh, from the practices. So the patients sort of take control of their own health and maybe manage their own health a bit better and then you know particularly with with medication reviews it'll remind them to say okay your med your med review is due your annual review for or your three monthly review for diabetes is due phone the surgery book an appointment and we're built we're working with gps at the moment in in the resource in, in the sort of focus group to say well can patients record bps can they uh, upload mm -hmm. hba1c or can, you know we had we had a patient upload their um remote ecg uh, and email that to the practice securely through the app uh it, while we're testing the my health hub section so again we, we're working with patients to develop the app for, uh, and practices for what they want really cool so if i'm a practice that's now interested in looking at using my surgery app for my practice or my network and stuff yeah how much is going to cost uh, so it's a one-off system purchase price of sixteen hundred pounds, uh, and that's it to purchase it. Uh, they get the whole app and the dashboard and all the resources that help to go with uh, boating that to the patient, such as QR codes, uh, the the posters, mm -hmm. pop-up stands in practices to inform patients that they do have it. There is an ongoing subscription charge based on a sliding scale of um, fifteen pound for a smaller per month for a smaller practice of five thousand patients or less, um, seventeen pound fifty for a medium medium practice of five to 10,000 patients and then 20 pound per month for a larger practice of 10,000 patients or more. And then that covers you for everything. The uh, hosting in both the Apple and App Stores, we, we cover the uh, Apple updates. Um, it covers the, the hosting of, 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 of the, um, the, the manager dashboard. And we do offer, and that, that also offers tiered login for um, social prescribers, link workers, third sectors, where they can only get limited access to the app. So they, they can only sort of put information on the what's on section, but uh, that's the cost for practices. Okie dokie, sounds cool. So if people right. were interested in signing up, uh, where would you recommend they have a look? Yeah, just visit our website, www.mysurgeryapp.co.uk, um, or they can email us directly. And we um, we do offer training sessions or a one-to-one -one demo of the app if they wanted more information. Um, and they, But they can email us or visit our website. There's a contact us page on our website, and then we'll get our team will get back in touch with them directly. Cool. And thank you for that, Stephen. In terms of showing us the app, showing us what it can do and everything else. As always, EGP if you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comments. Definitely leave us a like if you found this useful content. And if you want to, subscribe, because we'd love to give you and make sure you can get to all this content easily and effectively. If you're interested in more information, check out this video right here that shows you about a bit more about the NHS app itself and how to use it with patients. And I'm sure YouTube should be selecting another video right here for you to have a look at and things. And as always, EGP Learning is here to help save you and your patients' time by tech enhancing primary care and learning. And we'll catch you in the next episode.